Sometimes, TV actors find themselves in scenes that produce a very real fear response. From dangerous stunts to jump scares that proved way too hard jolting, these are the TV scenes that terrified actors in real life. Signing up for Game of Thrones pretty much guarantees that you'll be trading blows and blades eventually. That action component appealed to Ian Glenn, who played Jorah Mormont, the disgraced knight who transitioned from spying on Daenerys to becoming one of her most loyal servants. As Glenn explained to Elle, he loves stage fighting, but he was intimidated by the scale of Jorah's gladiatorial scene, which saw him take on multiple adversaries in the same hectic sequence. He said, I was pretty fearful. When it's that extensive of a fight, I was fighting various people with different weapons, things can happen. Accidents can happen. Fortunately, everything worked out, and the scene became one of Glenn's favorite memories of working on the show. He told Entertainment Weekly, The whole gladiatorial sequence, it was a very hard week and I loved doing that. So for the action side of things, that sequence encapsulated it. My little girl was there. You know, she watched her papa work. David uh, said, oh, you know, come sit here, you can call and shoot. She was like, action. While that may have been the scariest scene to shoot, a different one proved too much to even watch. Glenn admitted to Variety that he couldn't bring himself to watch Jorah fight in the Battle of Winterfell because he was too emotionally invested in the character. Breaking Bad never shied away from grisly and tragic deaths, but there was one that really shook up the cast and crew. Kristen Ritter knew from the start that her character Jane had to die. But the scene where it happened, in which Jane chokes on her own vomit after taking heroin, was rough for everyone involved. Ritter said that during shooting, the crew struggled to watch the terrifyingly authentic scene, and that she had to take breaks because it was too overwhelming. Her mother can't even talk about it. Another parent who struggled with the scene was Brian Cranston. He said that as he was watching Ritter pretending to choke, he suddenly saw his own daughter in her place, his worst fear coming to life. It's the one scene from a very dark show that still makes him emotional. Jane's death was also Aaron Paul's worst scene. His character Jesse tries to revive her, which involved Paul pounding on Ritter's chest while she wore a special rig. Talking about that scene in 2019, Paul said he and Ritter cried during shooting, adding, I just couldn't come back from it. Usually, the only person safe from a jump scare induced heart palpitation is the person jumping out. But Victoria Pedretti is so good at playing a ghost that she even scared herself in one especially heart-lurching scene. In the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House, Pedretti plays Nell, one of the inhabitants of the titular house, who survives the ghosts in her childhood home only to die when she returns as an adult. Later on in the series, Nell's sisters get into an argument while driving to the haunted mansion, and Nell's ghost bursts between their seats, shrieking like, well, a very distraught ghost. Pedretti told Decider that Nell wasn't trying to scare her sisters. As she explained, it came from a deeper place and a real need, so that's why it's so loud and immediate. I knew it was happening and I screamed it myself. But it still terrified everyone involved. Her co-star, Oliver Jackson Cohen, confessed that watching it got him too, telling Pop Sugar, I watched that episode the other day and I was so, so scared. Nell broke me. If you shudder when watching a character die in a spectacularly gruesome way, spare a thought for the actor living the scene, especially when it comes to the cast of The Walking Dead. The zombie show has delivered some of the most grisly deaths on TV, but maybe the most shudder-inducing of all was watching Jeffrey Morgan's Negan stab Austin Nichols' Spencer in broad daylight in Season 7. Nichols wasn't crazy about that moment either. He was padded with a special chest plate and a bag filled with fake blood and guts. But Morgan had to use a real razor to split open the bag. The actor told Entertainment Weekly, I was afraid he would puncture the chest plate and actually cut me, because he comes at me really hard and really fast. Luckily, Morgan got it right in the first and only take. While dying was scary, coming back as a zombie was all fun. Nichols revealed, it was cool to do all this fun stuff with the zombie makeup and zombie contacts. After his character's dramatic death was over, he said, I just stood up and started screaming, and I just started yelling, Yeah! That was awesome! Like everyone who isn't an aspiring medium, Gabourey Sidibe prefers her ghosts to be special effects. But a supernatural experience made her think a real spirit showed up for one scene in American horror story Coven. In episode 12, Sidibe's character, Queenie, recites a Latin spell to conjure an audience with Papa Legba, the gatekeeper to the spirit world. 
During an evening with the women of American Horror Story, Sidibe said that as she spoke the words, the light fixture above her began to shake. While shooting another part of the scene, the light fixture crashed to the floor, and she felt a finger running up her chin to her bottom lip, which started to swell. Sidibe and a makeup artist went to a trailer and started hearing scratching noises on the walls outside. They only stopped when the makeup artist said a prayer and clapped her hands. Completely freaked out, Sidibe refused to say the Latin summoning words again, but she relented when the other actors struggled to get the hang of them. This time, her top lip swelled up. One of the first victims of the ever-growing mind flayer in Stranger Things Season 3 was Heather the Lifeguard, played by Francesca Reale. In a telepathic trance, Eleven finds Heather in a bathtub full of ice, where she pleads for help before being dragged down into the water by an unseen force. Shooting the first half of the scene was creepy for Reale, who spent a day, quote, drowning herself in the bathtub. And things only got scarier. For the part of the scene where Heather is pulled underwater, Reale told Cinema Blend, doing the drowning was actually in a pool with a black bottom, which was terrifying for me because I hate any body of water that has a black bottom. Adding to the waking nightmare, there was a mechanism attached to her foot which pulled her down. She had to hold her arms above her head like she was reaching for Eleven and scream, both without creating bubbles while keeping her eyes open. Reale admitted that it was, quote, incredibly hard, but she said that she enjoyed the chance to do a stunt, and she's game for more. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina leans much more heavily into occult practices than the show's bright and bubbly predecessor. And despite playing powerful witch Prudence on screen, Tati Gabrielle says she got chills when it came time to act out the resurrection ritual in season one. The ritual the group performs involves walking deep into a dense forest in the dark, standing on a pentagram lit by candles, and chanting black magic spells to summon spirit hounds. Fine for witches, but the atmosphere made for a spine-tingling shoot. As a student of necromancy, I strongly advise that you recite the text word for word. The slightest deviation and we could all wind up dead. Gabrielle confessed to Kudaman magazine, I was super terrified being out there at night, repeating these spells that are very real spells and feeling like we're calling on these weird dark forces. We prayed before we started the scene. Because the show draws on real, magical practices, Gabrielle worried that she might be messing with actual spirits. She admitted to Collider, I get freaked out sometimes when I go home at night, thinking that a demon is gonna be lurking at the corner of my room. Vampires aren't afraid of much, but the humans who play them have very real concerns. Natasha Dimitrio, who plays the vampire Nadia in the mockumentary series What We Do in the Shadows, didn't feel so hot when a fire effect didn't go as planned. I just... You know, it is not much scares me, but this... In a scene in the season one finale, three Staten Island vampires visit a church where they slowly start to burn up. Demetrio's hands really were set on fire, and she wore gloves covered in a special paste that's supposed to burn without damaging skin. But the fire started getting out of control. She explained to Stuff, They thought I was just doing it as part of the scene, so it was like a good five seconds of me thinking I was going to lose my hand. Showrunner Jermaine Clement thought the accidental effect looked great. But Demetrio understandably broke with her character under fire, admitting, I definitely ruined it by screaming, help, help, in my English accent. Not all monsters are supernatural. Netflix's Mindhunter explores the FBI's early attempts to understand what makes serial killers tick. Jonathan Groff plays hostage negotiator turned serial killer investigator Holden Ford, who's based on the real-life FBI agent John E. Douglas. In the show, Ford forms a strange bond with real-life killer Ed Kemper, played to terrifying effect by Cameron Britton. At 6'9", Kemper was physically imposing, and he had a high IQ. He was chillingly eloquent in his descriptions of the violent crimes he committed. Watching the real Kemper, or Britton's version, describe his motivations as spine-tingling, especially if you're in the room. Director and producer David Fincher deliberately kept Britton apart from the rest of the cast to make their scenes even more intense. Groff admitted to Rolling Stone, To be sitting in this room with him in Los Angeles, all by myself, was terrifying. In particular, Groff was freaked out by a scene in the season one finale where Kemper hugs Ford. Groff told Esquire that when he was just reading the scene with Britton, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. That final scene was easy to act because he is truly terrifying. Excessively creepy clowns have become a scourge of movies and TV in the last few years. 
And two of the more famous clown trendsetters are American Horror Story freak shows Twisty and his accomplice, Dandy, who burst onto our screens in 2014. These clowns even scared Horror Story veteran Emma Roberts. She had nightmares when shooting the show, and when she saw Twisty, her perfectly normal response was, He's gonna chase me through a forest at 4 a.m. in the middle of nowhere? I don't, I don't think so. In fact, Roberts' character Maggie isn't chased through a forest by Twisty, instead it's Dandy who's wearing a different but also horrifying clown costume. It didn't take much acting to get that scene right. You get this adrenaline of fear where you're like, oh my god, I know it's fake, but he's right behind me and it's really scary. True Blood's Tara Thornton went through a lot in her relatively short life. But the scariest scene for actress Rutina Wesley was the one in which Suki and Lafayette buried Tara, hoping to bring her back as a vampire after she was killed saving Suki. Tara is dead in the scene, but Wesley definitely wasn't. And like anyone with a pulse, she didn't enjoy being buried alive. In fact, she nearly had a panic attack. But since dead people can't breathe, much less hyperventilate, she had to stay as still as possible. She explained to Flair, I remember my heart was beating so fast. It took all my focus not to move an inch when the final shovel of dirt was thrown on my face. I think I might have actually inhaled some dirt that day. Although it was terrifying at the time, Wesley later admitted to Vulture, it turned out to be a beautiful shot. That's how you get it. You do it for real. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.